So the question is, why do we need to be religious? But not just religious, religious meaning with the emet, with the Torah and mitzvot, with the Shem Yidvarach and not some idolatry that's out there in the world or some type of cult. But mush, how can we connect to Hashem and why should we? Why should we? Now anyone that's done tshuva can tell you that doing tshuva is very difficult in the beginning because you pretty much have to admit that everything you've believed your whole life, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 years, has been a lie. So your whole world collapses immediately. Why? Because you realize everything you knew to be true is actually false. But why should somebody make such a move? Why should we do such a thing? Why should we turn our worlds upside down? Now if you look at just simple recent history, you'll see that before the world that we live in today, before the Western world became so predominantly atheist and people that are just going against Hashem in different ways, even in the name of religion, before that, you saw that marriages actually survived. But not only survived, divorce was a bad word. If someone got divorced, everyone would know and they would literally frown upon it. It would be unheard of. Like, what do you mean? Why are you getting divorced? What's wrong? Did you cheat? Did you lie? Like, why would you get divorced? Divorce was unheard of simply because everyone knows you have problems in marriage. It happens. There's ups and downs. Sometimes you love, sometimes you're not exactly in love, but nonetheless, there's ups and downs, like in any relationship in the world. The point of every relationship is for the two people to make the best out of it by making each other better. Not making ourselves better, making each other better. Meaning, bring the best out of each other by making one plus one equal three. Not one plus one equal two, because that makes us individuals. By making one plus one equal to more than just what we would be by ourselves. Nonetheless, when we were connected to Hashem, we had an instruction manual that told us that Shlom Bayit is so significant, Hashem is willing to change the truth, if you will, for it. One maaseh that happened that we learn about in Sefer Bereshit was when the angels came to Avraham Avinu and they told him, listen, Hashem said that uh, next year, this time next year, you're going to have a son. Now his wife, Sarah, that was Kodesh Kodeshim, left. She left. Why she left? She said, how am I going to have a son with a husband that's so old? So Hashem came to Avraham Avinu and he says, why did Sarah laugh? Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she laugh saying that I can't have any children or that how could I have any children when I am so old? She didn't say I am so old. She actually said my husband is so old. Why did Hashem change the truth, if you will? He changed it because, or avoided mentioning that specific sentence. He changed it simply because he knew that if he told Avraham Avinu that his wife thought he was old, it could create Shlom Bayit issues. So, it didn't need to be told. It didn't need to be told. It just she did something that wasn't good. It doesn't necessarily mean that we need to know all the details. It's wrong enough. We understand that when we have a Torah, we have a manual. We have a manual that tells us that we have to survive. We have to struggle together. We have to survive together. We have to enjoy together. We don't, we don't live like the goyim that are pretty much here today, gone tomorrow. We don't have this mentality as Jews that uh, you know, the relationship is no different, uh, marriage is no different than a boyfriend-girlfriend. This is why in Judaism there's no living together before you get married. If you're going to be married, you're going to be married. It's not, you're not going to be together for five or ten years and then decide if you like each other. So you look at it statistically and you see that the divorce rate over the last hundred years, to say it increased is an understatement. At this point in the Western world, over 80%, 80% of the couples get divorced. This is an awful statistic. So much so that it's almost to a point where you might as well not get married because you should already plan your second wedding. They said there was a maaseh where one rabbi says to Rav Nisim again, Allah shalom. He says to him, Kvoda Rav, I'm telling you, I think I'm going to start a new business. What's a new business? You have a business, you have a wedding hall. He goes, yeah, I think I'm going to start a new business. What's a new business? I'm going to start a divorce hall. Why? There's many more people getting divorces than there is people getting uh, married. So the point is, Rabotai, is that when we don't have the instructions, we have no idea how to be husbands. We have no idea how to be wives. We don't have no idea how to be anything. When you have the Torah, you know that Reshit Chochmah Yirat Hashem. First of all, you have to be afraid of Hashem. You need to know Hashem is watching. Why is that important, to be afraid of Hashem? Because if Hashem is watching, 
If that's the sign of wisdom, that means that before I yell at my wife, I'm going to say, hey, Hashem doesn't like it. Before I steal, I say, hey, Hashem doesn't like it. Before I get angry, before I become stingy, before I do anything that we all know is wrong inside us, we all know is wrong. I'm going to say, hey, he's watching. On top of it, on top of it, I know that there's a Mishnah that says, Ish isha zachu shechina b'neim. That when a husband and a wife have a merit of having shalom bayit, the shechina of Hashem comes down, just like it did at Mount Sinai. So anyone that wants miracles, anyone that wants all the good things in the world, the number one job they have every morning, aside from honoring Hashem, is to work on their relationship. It's a full-time job, and to make sure that that relationship not only survives, but prospers.